Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today, I'll show you a 1 to 99 or 120 crafting guide for 2019. What I will cover are the fast and cheap methods. This is primarily for main accounts. Here are the XP boosts for crafting. You can also get bonus XP from stealing creation. If you need a guide for stealing creation, then I do have that and I will leave the link in the description. It's also a very good choice to trade on double XP weekend because it is fairly expensive. There are more to list, but these ones are the most common XP multipliers in the game. Let's talk about the useful items for crafting. First, I have the Artisan's Outfit. By wearing all 5 pieces, you'll get 6% more crafting XP. You can obtain this from either Treasure Hunter or by playing the Stealing Creation minigame. If you don't want to play Stealing Creation, that's completely fine. Nowadays, you can buy the Stealing Creation Sacred Clay from the Traveling Merchant. We also have the Modified Bandana as well. Basically, it gives you 5% chance to save one piece of leather when you're crafting. Portable Crafters. There are a couple of different effects. First, you'll get 10% more crafting XP. Secondly, there is a 10% chance you can save either a hide or a clay when you're crafting. And finally, there's a 5% chance you will save a gem when you're cutting gems. You can either buy this from GE or share with others. There is a spreadsheet for tracking this, and I will definitely leave that link in the description. Scroll of Dexterity. It requires 60 crafting and 60 dungeoneering. Basically, there's a chance you can save a hide when you're crafting an item that requires 3 or more hides. The save chance depends on which dragon leather. Finally, the last useful item we have is the Crystal Chisel. When you're cutting gems, there's a 2% chance you can get an extra gem. It requires a Crystal Tool Seed. Then you have to pay one of the elves and then she'll enchant it for you. Now, it comes with 28 charges each. Unfortunately, it is not augmentable. Let's talk about the trading methods. From level 1 to 20, you will be spinning bowstring from flax. Now you'll have to find a spinning wheel, and the easiest one is located in Lumbridge Castle. In order to get there, just climb the Lumbridge Castle stairs once. As you can see right here, you just spin the wheel and pretty much AFK. The amount you need to level 20 is 298. If you need a bank, then there is one on the top floor of Lumbridge Castle. So Tony, how do you create a bank preset? First of all, you want to have all the items in your inventory and equipment. Now you hit the presets cog, then hit save on the very first preset slot. Whenever you want to load a preset, just press the one key. Now there is a way you can load the preset quickly. First of all, you want to angle your camera so that the bank interface isn't blocking the portable crafter. Immediately after you load the preset by hitting the key, you want to click the crafter right away. This way, it automatically closes it without any sort of delay. The first set of methods I'll talk about are the fast but expensive methods. From level 20 onwards, you'll be cutting gems. Yes, this is the dead fastest way to train crafting. If you do have the crystal chisel, this will save you even more money. Of course, you have to have a full inventory of uncut gems. Before you do anything, I do suggest you configure the portable crafter left click option in order to cut the gems. Just follow the preset quick loading strategy. The amount of gems you can cut per hour is 5300. If you don't believe me, then I do have a 1 hour footage of this and I will definitely leave that link in the description. Obviously cutting gems is really fast, but then there are some disadvantages. Well, the first problem is that there are buy limit constraints. However, there is a way you can buy a lot of these in bulk. The first method, and it's pretty new, is by using the price check and trade discord, or the second method is the traditional runescape forums. The other problem is that it does require a lot of upfront cash. I mean, selling the cut gems can be a little bit hard, especially on double XP weekend. These are the calculations as well as my recommended levels. It is assumed at 5300 gems cut per hour, and the only XP multiplier I'll be using is the portable crafter. On top of that, I also included the 5% chance in order to save a gem. The maximum XP per hour you can get for Dragonstones is a whopping 800k XP per hour. You can stop at 54 if you're planning to do battle staves. Otherwise, if you want to do Dragonhide shields, then you can stop at level 64. From 54 onwards, you'll be doing the elemental battle staves. You'll have 14 elemental orbs and 14 regular battle staves. When you configure the portable crafter's left click option, this time the option is craft. 
you should be able to craft 2700 battle staves in a single hour. If you don't believe me then I do have a 1 hour footage of this and I will leave the link in the description. This method as a whole I find it's pretty good balance of both XP per hour and costs. It's also very easy to sell the finished products because they're usually at ALK value. The only problem is that battle staves, they have a 1000 buy limit. Once again, you want to use the price check and trade discord or you can use the runescape forums. Here is my calculation slide and my recommended levels. Now for earth battle staves, you can probably skip that if you want because the orbs are pretty difficult to buy off the GE. The maximum XP per hour for battle staves is 408k XP per hour. Yeah, the last time I did air battle staves calculation, I kind of miscalculated this. Moving on, we have the Dragonhide Shields. That is from level 64 onwards. Now you can do bodies instead, but the shields will give you the most XP per hour. In every preset, you want to have a thread and a full inventory of Dragon Leathers. You can also use a Beast of Burden preset in order to store more Dragon Leathers as well. Now the Scroll of Dexterity and the Modified Bandana will also save you hides as well. If you haven't done so already, you want to configure the left click option to craft. Once again, just follow the same preset loading strategy as I explained earlier. For this demonstration, I won't be using a Beast of Burden preset. As you can see, you can only craft 6 of these shields before you have to bank again. Compared to cutting the gems, yeah, it's definitely less AFK. Without using a Beast of Burden, you can craft 1600 shields per hour. Now if you were to use a pack yak, which obviously not everyone has it at low levels especially, that would be bumped to 1800. Among all three methods, they have no buy limit constraints. Secondly, it's very easy to sell the shields to the GE. I do have a 1 hour footage of me crafting Dragonhide shields and I will definitely leave that link in the description. With that being said, here are the calculations. What I'll be showing you are how many shields required and not how many dragon leathers. This is assumed at 1,600 shields per hour. By crafting the Black Dragonhide shields, this will top off at 605k XP per hour. 99 plus section. The first and only useful item to add is the crafting cape. Basically, it serves as unlimited thread, and secondly, there is a chance you can cut all the gems in your inventory at once. Moving on, we have the calculations and the XP rates going from 99 to 120 or 99 to 200 million. I will only be showing you the expensive methods because trust me, it is more efficient to make money and then spend it on crafting if you're going for 120 or 200 million. My calculations also include the full artisan's outfit because at this point you should have unlocked it from either the traveling merchant or probably gotten lucky from treasure hunter. The XP per hour is also increased because you'll be using a better setup. I've talked about the fast but expensive methods, so let's talk about the cheap and profitable methods. Jewel Recrafting For the first inventory preset, this will be for if you haven't completed the Family Crest quest. Otherwise, if you've completed the Family Crest, then yeah, you can use the second preset instead. Since portable forges have been taken out in the game, here is the best place to craft jewelry if you have no requirements at all. The Artisan's Workshop it's south of the Falador Lodestone, just right beside the Mining Guild. So just load the preset and then smelt the furnace. Without the Family Crest complete, you can only craft 1350 jewelry per hour. See, it's much slower than before because the portable forages are unfortunately gone. I think the Combat Academy is also nice as well, but then you have to walk around in order to get to the furnace. Here is the closest bank to a furnace. That would be the Shallow Village Furnace Bank. This also requires a Shallow Village quest complete. In order to get there, you just want to use the Brimhaven Lodestone. Then you'll run north and then turn east, and finally take the cart. In order to use the furnace, no, it does not require you to pay money anymore. Here is the benefit if you completed the Family Crest. You can actually store gold bars in the metal bank. This in turn allows you to AFK even longer. Oh Tony, not everyone likes quests, blah blah. I get it, but if you want a faster profitable method, that shows you why quests are pretty rewarding, okay? That being said, you can craft 1650 jewelry per hour. If you don't believe me, then I do have a 1 hour footage of this. The only problem is that it's very slow for crafting XP, and secondly, it might be difficult to buy gems in bulk just because of the buy limit. 
Now the most profitable jewelry to make are the necklaces. The reason being is because of the sign of the porters. From doing this, there are two ways to level 99. Now if you want really good profit, then you want to make the Dragonstone bracelets. On the other hand, if you want more XP but less profit or possibly a little bit of a loss, then that would be the Dragonstone amulets. I don't suggest you string the Dragonstone amulets because it's kind of a waste of time. From level 59 onwards, you'll be making the decorated urns. There are two inventory presets. The first inventory preset will be for molding the urns, and secondly, that will be for firing the urns. You want to configure the portable crafter's left click option to clay crafting. The first step to this is you have to mold the urn. You want to select form clay, and then after that, you'll select what urn you want to mold it into. Every urn requires two soft clay. The next step you want to do is fire the urn. Now you must have the molded urns in your inventory. This time, you'll be selecting fire clay. Unfortunately, it is very slow, although it's very very AFK in this case. Just so you know, you don't have to alternate between molding and firing the urn immediately. You can just mold all urns at once and then fire them all at once after like an hour or something like that. By combining both of these methods in a single hour, this can average you around 667 urns. There are various urns you can do, and honestly, all comes down to personal preference. Now I won't be doing calculation for all the amounts required because this is meant to be a money making method. I mean, you can get around 2 million GP per hour, but unfortunately, it tops off at not even 100k XP per hour base. From 75 onwards, you'll be doing the Prif Harps. It is located in the Ithil district in Prif. I'm not 100% sure that how that's pronounced, so feel free to roast me if you want. You can get there by using a Crystal Teleport Seed. Obviously, I'm using a Tutan one, but a regular one works just fine. You will now tune the Harps and pretty much AFK. Every 3 minutes, you want to click the harp again. I know this requires the Plagzan quest complete, but trust me, this quest is really really rewarding. Without the voice of Saren, the XP per hour is 75k. It's not only extremely AFK, but it's free as well. I've talked about the regular training methods, so let's talk about the other methods for crafting training. From 89 onwards, you'll be doing Crystal Flask. Now, this requires 81 mining, plagues in, and as a first resort quest complete. Well first of all, you have to mine the crystal sandstone in the Ethel district, however that's pronounced. Unfortunately, there is a cap of 50 sandstone every single day. If you do have 115 dungeoneering, this can be bumped to 75. Obviously not everyone has that, but I'm just here to mention it anyways. The second step is that you have to melt the sandstone. There is a robust glass machine nearby in order to do so. Finally, you can blow them all in the crystal flask. You can blow around 1800 flasks per hour. The XP per hour for crystal flask is almost 300k. With the voice of Saren, this can be bumped even further to 20% more XP. Now this isn't factoring in the time that you spend mining and melting the standstone. We also have the potion flask, and that is at 200k XP per hour. Protein Hides You can obtain this from Treasure Hunter or some promotional events. Now the Portable Crafter will actually save you the Protein Hides. The XP per hide you'll get is level scaled. At level 50, you will be getting almost 200k XP per hour. Then at level 99, it will top off at 355k XP per hour. In a single hour, you should be able to craft around 1200 hides. So it is very AFK and it's also a free method to train as well. The only problem is that it does come in pretty limited supply. Gobi Bands This is a safe PvP activity. In a single day you can get up to 48.5k XP at level 99. It only takes you 3 minutes. Now there is an FC for this and it's called Mini Games. Finally, the Crafting Daily Challenge. You should only go after the Urn Challenges. Basically, you'll buy the respective urns as well as the runes to attach them. The amount of XP you can get in a single day at level 99 would be 46.8k. If you extend this with 50 Vizwax, this can be bumped to 93.6k. This wraps up my 1-99 or 120 crafting guide for 2019. Now my information is based on the calculation notes, so please use that as a reference. 
When it comes to cutting gems, it's a little bit more expensive than the Dragonhide Shields. The battle staves are really cheap compared to the other two methods. I also did calculations for both 120 and 200 million. Now the reason why it's more expensive to do the Dragonhide Shields compared to the Dragonstones is because the Crystal Chisel will give you 2% more gems. Obviously the gem prices are a little bit inaccurate because you cannot really buy them in bulk if you only use the GE price. With that being said, just choose which method is right for you, and of course, best of luck training crafting. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I will definitely be doing more 1-99 or 120 guides in the future.